Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. This is Chris Flynn, your host. In this video, we're going to be talking about director Terry Gilliam. And uh, he's known as a director who always encourages and uses in his films imagination or the themes related to imagination. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through each one of his movies. I own them all. There's 13, uh, excuse me, 12. And uh, if you've never heard of Terry Gilliam, check this video out because you're going to learn all about his films without any spoilers. And um, you might learn something new. And if you're a movie buff like I am and know who Terry Gilliam is, then stick around because this is a celebration of his films. And just a video, just my thoughts on each film that he's created, all 12. This is part one. We're going to do one, two, three, four. Five, the first five films in order that he directed, starting with Monty Python and then moving away from Monty Python. Um, so yeah, stick around and let's get started. So his first, Terry Gilliam's first movie, he actually started as an animator for uh, Monty Python. Uh, uh, more specifically, a show called Monty Python's Flying Circus, which a lot of you may be familiar with. It was on in England and made its way over to the rest of the world. Um, back in like the seventies, I want to say maybe sixties, and Terry Gilliam was an American animator, and this British comedy troupe hired him to do the animation for their cartoon show, which was very well received, very brilliant, and everybody loved it. Uh, I've actually never seen it, but I have seen some of the Monty Python films. Um, but Terry Gilliam was an animator for the TV show Monty Python. Excuse me, Flying Circus. So uh, when they decided to make films, their very first film was Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And they decided to take Terry Gilliam on as director of this film. Uh, it is a comedy, and the psychology of it is absolutely brilliant. And it is so funny. If you've never seen this, this really will change your life, as will all the Monty Python films and TV shows. And Terry Gilliam's first film... He's the only American uh, member of Monty Python is to this day, even though I don't think they're still actively working together. Um, but yeah, this is just about uh, a knight who's looking for the Holy Grail and the misadventures that he encounters. All right, so um, after the success of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, they went on to do Monty Python and the Meaning of Life, Monty Python and the Life of Brian, but those were directed by other members of Monty Python Troop. Um, so Terry Gilliam's, uh, next film was called Jabberwocky, and that's a really cool cover right there, I love the artwork, and, um, it sounds like Happy Console Game, oh, I love the artwork, <laughs> but anyways, um, this is a really good film, again, the psychology of it is there, and it's about this evil Jabberwock dragon-like creature that's, uh, preventing this one guy from moving to the city to make a living for his girlfriend that he loves, which is like a really obnoxiously fat uh, woman who doesn't even care about him. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, this is a really funny movie too. And I, I just love the plot and pacing of it. It's so... Uh, liberating to watch and it's very uh, fantastical all right so uh one film that you might be more familiar with and was a bigger success than Jabber jabberwocky was was tilly terry gilliam's tilly <laughs> terry gilliam's uh third film time bandits and this is a great film it's about a little boy who uh wakes up gets sent to his room to go to bed his parents hate him and he has these midgets, excuse me, dwarves, come into his room at night through a spaceship or something like that. I forget. It's been a while since I've seen it. And then they go through a portal. And they go through different time periods. They meet Robin Hood. They meet, I think, Napoleon um, and various other real people throughout history. And they steal the fortune of these famous history people famous historic people and then take a portal to another dimension so they can't get caught. And it's all about the youthful imagination and being creative and not limiting your mind to anything. And it's a really good film. It's kind of a child child's film. 
a child movie, but um, um, it's still really fun to watch. And again, the psychology of it is there. Like you'll hear me say that. What I mean by that is sort of just like it's a very his films are very cerebral, but without limitations, and they don't try to put your mind in a box. They try to open it up, and uh, I think that's just a great way, great approach to filmmaking. Very fresh. And um, by the way, yeah, Time Bandits came out in 19, 1981, and it was revolutionary at the time, as were all of the next two films that we're going to talk about in this video. And it's time to mention it. You guessed it. Brazil. I don't know if you can see that cover. It's kind of dull. It's actually a three DVD set with special features and two versions of the film. But there's the cover. It's called Brazil. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, and it's about this guy, a middle-aged man who works for uh, a bureaucracy. And it's just all about the... It's a commentary on the ridiculousness of society and how they strip the imagination from the, from the mind. And this is part two in Terry Gilliam's... Um, Imagination Trilogy, the first one being Time Bandits, then Brazil, and I have the Criterion 3-disc set. Again, you got two versions of the film, the one that was released in theaters, and then the one that was released later in theaters, and that's the final cut that Terry Gilliam wanted to be originally re released in theaters, but the production company, he's battled the producers and the uh, film companies his whole career. He's never become like a billionaire director, but he he likes sticking to his guns and making movies his way and not bowing down to popular opinion or the uh, bureaucracy of film companies. And, uh, but yeah, Brazil is uh, about a middle-aged man who works for a company and, like the opening scene is just like all these people running around with paper in their hands, taking it here, and there's computers that that are making mistakes and getting people killed, and it's just a great movie. Um, not because it gets people killed, obviously. I don't think that's something to celebrate, but uh, it's this commentary on technology, it's a commentary on society, and it's a must watch. If you don't watch any other film that Terry Gilliam has ever directed, watch Brazil. Because it's his, it's his uh, magnum opus for sure. And the final film that I'm going to share with you guys in this video is The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. And uh, this is part three in Terry Gilliam's Imagination Trilogy. Third and final film in that one. Uh, and it's about an old man. And now you see the theme. The first time man is about a little kid. Uh, Brazil is about a middle-aged man. And then... Munchausen is about an old man and it's just about this German guy who's alive during the quote quote age of reason but it's not really re reasonable at all there's war there's famine there's poverty there's dismay there's disorder and uh, a lot of people are really going to hard times kind of like reality you know just to be honest but um yeah, um, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen is about an old man who goes on adventures and he brings this little girl around with him who sneaks on to his ship and they go on adventures and I don't want to give anything away, but it's a great movie. It's one of my, I, I think it is my favorite Terry Gilliam film, either that or The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, uh, or possibly The Zero Theorem. Those are three that stick out in my mind as great. Um, but yeah, that covers the first uh, one, two, five Terry Gilliam films. We're at about 10 minutes here, so I'm going to close up, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah. Um, Terry Gilliam is a great director and you need to check out his films. If you're, if you call yourself a movie fan, because his is some of the most imagined, imagined, uh, Matt uh, takes the most imagination and, uh, psychology and commentary and it really will open your eyes to a new world outlook, uh, which is something I'm kind of proud of him doing. And I'm happy to own all his films. And be sure to stick for 
uh, check out part two, which is all released within the coming days. And those are his remaining um, seven films. And we'll talk about those, each one, briefly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. If you could hit that sub button. I talk about movies. I talk about music. I talk about video games. The occasional vlog. It's just my life in arts and entertainment and beyond. And coming live from the Arctic Circle, I hope that you will come on this journey with me and hit that sub button because I only have 12, excuse me, 14 subscribers. And uh, I could really use some more. I've been doing this for about eight, one year now, almost exactly to the day. So, yeah, that's it, guys. I'll take about any more time. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam. G-I-L-L-I-A-M. Terry. Great director. All right, guys. Peace out.